Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Pia Grunewald. I am a project officer from All Digital, and I'm really happy to be here at uh, FOSTEM. Uh, it's my second year here, and my first year doing a presentation. And the reason why I'm doing this is to talk about our project on uh, open adult education. Uh, in terms of open adult education, I should be clear that uh, I'll give an introduction about our network and what we do. But in terms of adult education, we focus on upskilling and reskilling uh, adults with little or no skills to be ready for the digital transformation. Um, just about what we do, so at All Digital, we support about 43% now of Europeans with insufficient digital skills. And we are an organization that started from the grassroots up. So we were founded a little bit over than 10 years ago by organizations based in cities like here in Brussels. We have Florian here with us today, who's one of our, who represents one of our member organizations, but we have member organizations all across Europe that work with really bridging the digital skills gap with uh, excluded, disenfranchised communities. And they decided to form the organization after realizing that there's much challenges to be had at the European level on the on um, bridging the digital skills gap. So they formed us in terms of, uh, originally we we're called Telecenter Europe, and now we're, uh, we changed the name to All Digital. We have different focus areas in terms of basic digital skills, employability and entrepreneurship, uh, coding, digital media literacy, and STEAM skills for society. And a lot of the projects we do are uh, Erasmus projects, some Horizon projects uh, in doing these areas. Now, going to open adult education, I'll actually go to uh, this slide here. So in 2017, in our member surveys, we came up, we realized there were a uh, few challenges in that our members needed to find new approaches to teaching basic digital skills to different uh, cohorts across the population. So it needed to be more modular and adaptable to address immediate needs. And we also wanted to take into account more mobile and open source, free and open source technologies and solutions. I'm sure, as you probably are aware, a lot of the digital inclusion sector got a lot of support from proprietary organizations, and that support has been cut a lot. But also, proprietary organizations prepare, propose a big challenge for disenfranchised communities because you're locking people into a software right from the get go. And many of our organizations are realizing that. and making full transitions to free and open source technologies. And we need to create better training modules to address that need. And we also needed to focus on new digital skills and use digital different standardized frameworks like DigiComp Edu. Uh, at the European level, I mean, we're here in Brussels. We're not a strictly European organization, but there are various uh, international frameworks being used in terms of identifying core competencies to teach uh, digital skills and also to identify what skills are missing and lacking. So the Open AE project, Open Adult Education project, is addressed to teaching high quality skills and competencies to educators. And so we're talking about people working in digital competency centers, uh, people working in libraries, so they can have a series of modules to train themselves in and also bring this out to their uh, end, end users, so adults interested in reskilling and upskilling. I'll go back down here. So we're developing a curriculum. We have a curriculum already developed, and we have a toolkit on open technologies that are mapped according to Digicomp Edu. So we use Digicomp as a area which we identify what skills educators need and we use, and with our consortium that are a few organizations very adept in free and open source technologies, we identified resources and different modules and softwares that we can use to uh, train e-facilitators or digital educators. We're about to start piloting a with 10, at least 10 e-facilitators in four different European countries using this curriculum and this open modular uh, toolkit. 
and then we'll produce guidelines on transferability. So they saw the project outputs again. And so we have the toolkit, and we're also going to use um, SlideWiki, if anyone is familiar with that, in terms of creating courses for uh, educators and such. Before we started, and this is also one reason why I brought Florian here, is that one of the reasons why I really wanted to come to Foster is we wanted to raise awareness to the free and open source community, to developers, about what is the need to bridge the gap um, in terms of how free and open source technologies can better really reach the most vulnerable in society and the people who are most at risk of being locked into uh, proprietary software. And we conducted uh, desk research in all four countries where this project will be piloted in. So in here in Belgium, in Switzerland, in Spain, and in Italy with e-facilitators understanding the challenges. And the results of this cultural and professional contrast between the two main effects on one side, educators and the general public have superficial knowledge and awareness on open culture topics and resources. And on the other side, there's also lacking structural support and promotion that has pushed the creation of many networks and organizations to independently cope with this deficiency. And we really want to bridge that gap and promote that dialogue, and that's also why we're here today. And the main ta tangible ex effects that we can observe in the presence of this market is the huge number of free and open source technologies. Maybe Florian would like to speak about his experience and tell a little bit more about the organization here. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Florian. Uh, my English is not perfect, but my ideas are simple, so I, I suppose it will be enough. Uh, I'm working with Max, it's a non-profit organization working in two poor parts of Brussels, Molenbeek and Anderlecht. Uh, and we are working in digital inclusive uh, with adults and with young children, uh, children and yeah. Uh, and uh, why we are participating at this project? Uh, it's because we realize that the animators that are working with us, uh, most of them they don't have a low, low level of education. They have a basic. Uh, basic education, but not always a good diplomas, and uh, they have an, a lot of knowledge, but uh, we realize that they can uh, be very good animators because they know better the way of thinking of simple people of this part of the city, because they are simple p people like me, I'm a simple person also, and, but it makes a normal relation with the the people who are learning, uh, and it's easy. So we have people also wearing, uh, I don't know, comment tu sais, un foulard islamique? The Muslim pe person, the woman also, and well, these kind of things. Uh, we try to work with peers, uh, but we realize that these e-facilitators e don't have a big knowledge about open source. Uh, way of thinking and the tools. It's not something uh, normal for them. And so we try to take this opportunity to professionalize, to professionalize better the, the work they are doing with this kind of tools. And uh, why, why we, we are choosing this direction? It's mainly for three reasons I want to share with you. Uh, the first one is it's about uh, collective intelligence. Uh, that the people who are in the classroom have knowledge, uh, they have competences, uh, they have needs, and it's the, what we try to do is to, to understand the needs they have, but also to start from the, the power they have, to, to be open to, to the knowledge they have, but also uh, to the way of thinking. Uh, well, that's the, the first thing, and I think that open source tools can help especially uh, to develop uh, this kind of things. And the, the second thing for e-facilitators uh, is that they're not always uh, conscient about the tools they are using and the consequence about using these tools. So, uh, for instance, we are still using uh, Microsoft. Uh, in our, uh, we have two uh, digital open space running with 15 computers uh, and a connection. 
uh, and we are in a network with all these open digit, uh, digital open spaces of Brussels are together in a network. And no, we are thinking about a, a curriculum, this mm -hmm. one, to propose this curriculum to all multimedia animators working in this field uh, in Brussels. Uh, and so the, the second idea I wanted to say about the tools is that we, will, we would like to, pro, to make possible a choice that the person knows why he's using these tools and, and if, what are the consequences about the tools because of course the tools will have an impact about the results but also a, an impact on the end on the one who's using the tools. Uh, and the way of working of, of these tools will not be the same way of working uh, of a private tools, uh, of a private license. And to also we think it's an interesting way of, uh, of promoting uh, the fact of working together, but with the, uh, with the use of the tools. I'm not sure to be very clear, but it's more to think, and it's the third idea I, I wanted to share with you, it's to think about, uh, about the culture of participation. Uh, and in the in a culture of participation, uh, voilà. actually, you, you, you found a lot of things in the uh, floss culture as common work, uh, to share the resources, uh, uh, n not one person decide for the others. Uh, well, you have a lot of things who, who can be maybe useful uh, for us. Voilà. That, that's it, and I, I give back the... the I had a question to, the, to everybody or yes. to Pia. And uh, I'm very interested in hearing some questions from the audience, but one of the things we want to promote here is also the concept of free culture and collaboration and collaborative knowledge. So while Max, they sometimes speak very lowly of themselves and say, we still use Microsoft, we still use these tools, but the idea is also teaching people about licenses, teaching people about copyleft, how they can create their outputs to be open so it can be reused by other people. And they're excellent at that. The, so we want to share that open culture and make people realize that it's not necessarily strictly the end tools, but how you use them in your daily life. Um, and if anyone has questions or comments or challenges, uh, please raise your hand. We have a lovely assistant here who's gonna send over your mic a microphone. To you? Yes. Hi. I, I just want to ask, you said you have your curriculum in SlideWiki, is that yes. correct? Okay. So if I understood correctly, what the curriculum you're currently developing is something like a train the trainers, so you're, is that correct? Yes? Yeah. Okay. And what kind of language do you have so far? Oh, um, so this will be in English, French, Italian, and Catalan, a little bit also in Spanish and Dutch. Uh, and this is also one reason why we're starting to pilot in April, because it takes a long time to translate it in that many languages. And with the slide wiki tools, once we, we have it closed, but once it's open, it'll be open for everyone to use the slides in their education. It's not open yet, but once piloting starts, it will be open uh, as they release. So, and if you look at the um, open AE website, that will be accessible to everyone. Another question? Or comment? Challenges? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.